Hi, my name is Todd Carpenter. I'm the Executive Director of NISO, the National Information Standards Organization. And this is a CNI project briefing on using machine learning systems to improve collections, developments, and services. Joining me in this recording are Sebastian Hammer, President of Index Data, Philip Jacobson, who is CEO and founder of Samhung, Carolyn Morris, who is Vice President of Ingram Library Services, and Boaz Nedef Menes, who is University Librarian at Lehigh University. I'm going to start by just giving you some background on the CCLP project and give you a little update in terms of where we stand and where we're headed. I'd like to start by first of all thanking the Institute for Museum and Library Services for providing support for this project. This project was made possible in part by a generous grant from the Institute and Museum Library Services. If you want more information about the grant, you can get that by clicking on or visiting that URL. You can also go to the website for this project. The mission of this project is really to look at how we can support collaboration and innovation amongst trusted participants in an interoperable and community-owned infrastructure. The goal of this effort is to create some best practices and improve standards, and also to develop some prototype middleware that will empower value-driven library collections, as well as increase, increase collection diversity, availability, and access, while improving stewardship and institutional efficiencies in a collaborative first environment. And we envision a world in which all libraries have and are able to steward in an equitable, financially sustainable, and efficient manner access to library resources and as well as the scholarly record by fostering an ecosystem of interoperable systems, standards, and open collaboration models amongst libraries, publishers, and service providers. We're doing this through a rather complicated uh, standards process in partnership with a variety of organizations in our community. Working in partnership with our, uh, the team at IMLS, the team of invest, uh, uh, principal investigators are working together with a steering committee that is re broadly representative of the community. That steering committee is divided into three different components. There is a research team that is exploring uh, how collaborations and studying how collaborations work in our community, particularly from a governance perspective. We have a technical development team that is actually working on the technical development of the middleware. And we also have a series of working groups who are focusing on specific areas of cooperative collections and trying to build a best practice, a, uh, a recommended practice uh, that is focused on cooperative collections. That set of working groups, uh, there are now eight of them, are working on different components of a recommended practice. That recommended practice will include a variety of descriptions of collaborative models, of terminology, of some of the key activities and points of engagement around cooperative collections. And they'll be exploring what are the keys to working together? What are the uh, identified barriers or challenges? What are some of the specific data structures, uh, some of the specific interoperability needs and data needs and infrastructure needs that uh, we need to advance cooperative collections from the various components in the life cycle of, of collections? They'll be developing specific personas and roles and describing them, as well as describing how those different community types and personas interact with other community members. As I mentioned, there is also a research component of this project, which is we're doing in partnership with Ithaca SNR. Ithaca SNR has done a number of case studies, as well as a landscape analysis that is looking at cooperative collections from a very high level. They're also feeding information back into the process about best practices, specifically, particularly as it relates to governance, um, because we've identified governance as a key component of the success of collaborative projects. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bosna Davmanis. I'm the uh, university librarian in Lehigh University Library and uh, a copy eye for the CCLP project, as well as uh, uh, serving on the technical product development lead team. Um, some ideas around us uh, seeking this MVP uh, uh, around the work of the working groups and uh, other uh, stakeholders. Uh, we believe that the work of uh, collaborative collection development and the collaborative management of collections uh, are is ripe for automation. Uh, we uh, focus on increasing community awareness to each other uh, work and uh, for group actions. Uh, we also uh, take into account uh, the top-down collaborative work has not been very successful this far uh, and uh, as such not sustainable. Uh, CCLP is uh, focused on the needs of practitioners while taking into account big picture arrangements that libraries sign or consortia. Uh, we also think that provided the right values and governance, a CCLP system uh, can be utilized to ensure uh, the technology is optimized and thinking that automation that is run by the community and for the community, uh, given some of the protections around privacy of data, users, etc., is going to be uh, a best fit for uh, such a system. We, and we also uh, built uh, CCLP in such a way that it's already from its core, cross industry, uh, and as such, uh, such a, a particular collaboration going forward, hopefully, can assist uh, uh, us to address some of the core uh, challenges that our uh, industry is facing. Uh, thinking about uh, how to increase collections uh, around uh, diversifying it or uh, utilizing expertise best or uh, looking at our uh, open access uh, needs, etc. So uh, when we think about it, and this is coming from the work of the working groups as well as the steering committee, there were four different models that we envisioned uh, to guide our thoughts. Uh, we are focusing at this point on the uh, model two. Uh, which is uh, an apartment building in which several libraries work together in order to achieve some uh, efficiencies and some uh, additional scope. So uh, we call it, we want to celebrate birthdays with some neighbors. Uh, so basically, uh, those libraries want to be collaborating with each other around a particular subject area, not necessarily committed to do more. We also have here other models in which we uh, thought that, you know, like there is a, definitely a future and a present of uh, collabor collaborative work, but those are going to be uh, looking looked at uh, in the future. Um, so uh, when we're looking at all those areas of potential uh, growth and collaborative uh, work as it comes to systems, uh, our steering committee and our working groups particularly uh, focus now on the areas of prospective uh, selection and acquisitions. So you can see here from those lightning uh, uh, symbols that that's where uh, our, the majority of interest lies. Uh, we're thinking that the other areas uh, of collaborative uh, collections lifecycle can be also informing such work. Uh, so, for example, uh, print preservation uh, and uh, resource sharing and other areas as well. Uh, so those are going to be feeding uh, our uh, working on prospective selection acquisitions across uh, uh, libraries as we go forward. Uh, there is one hypothetical example that we're looking at. Uh, free libraries, Lehigh, University of Pittsburgh, and Rutgers, uh, trying to build Ukrainian studies collection together under one consortium, PALSI, uh, in this case. Uh, and this uh, is a useful example for us to begin uh, to uh, uh, look at uh, uh, the system, thinking that such a model can allow us to think how uh, a new library comes in, what information we need to know about each other's work, and what do we do if a library decides to quit the collaboration? Uh, we want to be avoiding duplication and provided, uh, provide the needed resources more than what we have right now uh, to our users. Such a model needs to be sustainable in the systems that we're going to be developing. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Carolyn Morris. I'm the Vice President for Ingram Library Services. And Boaz asked if I would join this presentation and talk a little bit about how CCLP might be an opportunity for vendors and publishers. 
So uh, for vendors, I find CCLP to be a very exciting project because it will provide a single hub around which vendors can build new AI-driven services without having to invest in creating a place to hold all of the data that libraries are talking about gathering. Not only that, because it's an open project and because libraries own it and are participating in it, it comes without all of the other caveats that librarians frequently have around um, artificial intelligence, what it means and how the algorithms work. So really creating this re collaborative space where vendors and libraries can work together to better use AI to build collections that are more impactful. It also just offers uh, vendors the ability if they have a lot of data today, but no way to bring it all together to inform how a library might make decisions about which books to buy, to be able to offer uh, some services around CCLP where perhaps they're saying, we can bring together and inform um, your selections by the usage data we have, for instance, in your databases. So lots of opportunity to communicate via API with a single hub and have a lot of library data there instead of having to try to communicate with all different ILSs in all different um, library situations. So one hub makes that ability to experiment and collaborate together much more efficient. It should also allow vendors to identify and utilize new parameters to drive approval plans and um, offer the opportunity for them to create ways to automate or streamline approval plan modifications. For publishers, the publishers frequently uh, would like to be able to speak more directly to libraries and feel that vendors are in between the library and the, and the publisher. So CCLP provides a platform where they can see how their metadata is being presented. They can then also enhance their metadata more directly and be able to improve that. It gives them an opportunity to uh, view acquisitions data, perhaps, if libraries are willing to share that so that they can see who is buying what and how that might inform their publishing programs going forward. It gives them a path to promote backlist titles, especially once they've been cited. So a lot of the book discovery mechanisms and workflows that are built into academic library space today are built around books that have just been published and not things that are a little bit older that may um, suddenly be having an uptick in interest. So there's an other place where publishers might be able to have some more direct impact on their sales. It gives insight into market trends so they can see format preferences, topics of interest and pricing, and depending on what libraries decide they will share on the CCLP platform, a lot more visibility than publishers may have had in the past. And then um, we always love to encourage publishers to improve metadata. It's something that we um, are always saying at Ingram for sure. Um, and this is an other vehicle in which they would be able to do that and immediately see the impact of that. Hi, everybody. I am Sebastian with Index Data, and I am here to talk a little bit about CCLP from a technical and product development perspective and to think a little bit about how AI and large language models might fit into our technology vision. So let's start by thinking a little bit about what CCLP is. Um, my own vision of the project is that we're trying to create a shared space where libraries and groups of libraries, consortia and so on, can collaborate to maintain all or parts of their collection and where they can work together with uh, suppliers, with booksellers, with vendors to better inform the process and to create a more holistic model facilitated by technology to support library collection development. So the way that we have gone about conceptualizing this is that we are pursuing a set of use cases that might include things like um, collection development and acquisition, uh, collection analysis, long-term retention, digitization, resource sharing, weeding, and so on. And those use cases will be facilitated by business logic that we are thinking about and designing. But ultimately, all of this really depends on 
gathering a bunch of data together. Um, and you can think about that data as being made up of things like the holdings of libraries across a consortium, uh, things like usage information, whether it is digital or local use or resource sharing, things about the materials available for vendors uh, yet to be acquired, pricing information, and so on. Um, we want to look at providing access through all of that data through a common framework. So how do we conceptualize? How do we think about these different aspects of the project? Um, use cases we're exploring at the moment predominantly through a UX-led process where our UX designer is working with different groups of subject matter experts and leaders in the project to think through some of these use cases to explore how they might unfold in practical workflows every day. But we're also thinking about it from a perspective of not just constructing or imagining CCLP as having a user interface, but as, happy, as, as something that has lots of integration points, that has APIs and, and protocols that will allow you to build new systems, that will allow you to build integrations between vendors with library service platforms and so on. We want to think about this as a, a kind of truly open platform vision that can support an ecosystem of different types of applications and uses. Uh, for the business logic, we are thinking about a, a shared core code base that we are co-developing and that we are managing together in an, an open governance model. So we think about uh, CCLP as driving an open source development process that is as collaborative and open as we can make it. Um, for the data, we're really looking across a lot of different types of data that live in a lot of different types of systems today. Some of these data sources are associated with well-understood standards with a long history. Uh, in other cases, we're thinking about data that may not have standard mechanisms associated for data exchange and, and, and access. We want to really drive and inform and inspire a conversation about standardization in some of these areas and, and urge interoperability, not just between different types of systems in the library ecosystem, but between different stakeholders, if you will. Uh, we want to encourage data flows between publishers and libraries and from libraries to consortia and from libraries back to publishers and booksellers as well to encourage uh, uh, more efficient processes and more efficient business operations for everybody. So where might AI fit into all of this? First of all, we think that there are real opportunities for AI to assist us in creating and cleaning, uh, refining and clustering uh, emerging data coming from many different sources that might provide different attri attributes or aspects of, of the same um, bibliographic entities or, or, or publications in our ecosystem. Uh, we think that we can imagine AI and large language models being used to uh, develop filters for selection purposes based on current holdings uh, and sample titles. We can think about applying AI to describe and recommend titles from publishers that might be further out the long tail that are not well served by existing aggregators and approval plans. Um, we're really excited about seeing AI-based recommendation filters for new publications that might be driven by all kinds of, 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 of data inputs that we aren't really able to, to make actionable today purchasing history, have circulation data, usage information, even faculty CVs and course catalogs and so on. So to, to, to use these types of technologies to look across what an organization does and to inform decisions about uh, collection development in the library. And we want to think about enabling these technologies to uh, help us analyze collections based on, on, on our peers and a consortial grouping and so on. Um, so, so we see lots of really exciting possibilities here. Uh, some of these possibilities will depend on large language models continuing to develop 
uh, along the path that they are now. Some of them will depend on us thinking about clever ways to build integration points between large language models and CCLP. So we see CCLP not just as a platform that can that can benefit from these technologies, but also as a technology or as a platform that can really enable them by exposing lots of, of useful and actionable data in forms that can be consumed by large language models through APIs and integration points. Um, so those are uh, some of my thoughts. Um, I'm really excited to see where this work continues uh, and would encourage people to join in and participate. It's uh, an exciting and really important project, I think. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. My name is Philip. I'm the UX lead on CCLP. I'll talk to you a bit about how AI can help improve the user experience in a collection development setup. So there's more info in these slides than I can go through in this presentation. So you're welcome to go over uh, the slides yourself if you want to see all the details and I'll just go quickly through them and, and, and recap the, the main points. So as Sebastian mentioned, Right now, we're imagining this provisional concept where titles go into lists through profiles, which are these collections of filters, and through markers, which are these kinds of tags added to a title as it's ingested. And the lists can be created, maintained, and shared inside of the CCLP system. This all makes for a system where there is good data, it's going to be organized usefully, it's going to be machine readable, it's going to represent a bunch of different types of organizations. And because it's a product, um, there will be an opportunity to provide interfaces for feedback into the system. So users will be able to give feedback on what an AI could do uh, with this data in this system. So all of this means that I think it's a good match for some AI improved workflows. And I think there are four ways that uh, AI could help creating a better user experience. Of course, if you ask an AI researcher or an LLM expert, I'm sure they have better or different ways of viewing this. I'm coming at this as a user experience designer, thinking about how can this be practically helpful for people in this context of libraries and collection development. So. The four ways is it can create better tools, it can free up time, it can act independently, um, and it can do stuff probably that we haven't even thought about yet. So for as assisting people with existing tasks, it could be helpful to have AI, for example, proposing more intelligent, contextually meaningful stuff when you're doing your cataloging. Uh, or when you're doing your selection or streamlining the data so that your general collection development can be better. Uh, if it instead can take over some tasks, like for example unifying a lot of BIP records or doing the initial cataloging based on a PDF coming in in the SIP process, one could imagine that freeing up a lot of time for users to really zoom in on the, for example, the BIP, uh, f uh, the mark fields that are really important and require a lot of intellectual effort from an expert. Uh, or simply spending time just reviewing and approving or declining the, the stuff proposed by the AI. Um, and then if you imagine an AI doing new stuff, meaning not tasks that are done today, simply because they would be in volume too great, so analyzing large sets of data, reading through an entire entire catalog like this is just not done today because you just a human can't do it and without AI it doesn't really make sense to try to get a machine to to do it um, in this way so one could imagine I could definitely imagine having an AI run through the system and just give me a, a highlight of all the files that um, are in need of maintenance um, and an AI connecting me to other catalogers or selectors or or staff members across organizations that do the same thing as me so that we can collaborate um, or um, providing me with an overview of whether my collection is where it should be based on my stated goals. One could imagine more things and I think in terms of this particular uh, uh, area, CCLP, stuff like suggestions, analysis over time, and comparison of what I want versus what I have 
are some of the most interesting use cases.